How do you fit a lifetime of activities into just a few days? In a city that never sleeps, where there are endless museums, shopping options, and places to eat, I couldn't help but wonder, is it possible to get consensus on how to spend three perfect days in New York City? I don't think so, but I'm going to share with you in this video my version of the perfect three-day New York City visitor itinerary for first-time visitors. Welcome to New York! New York is a city of coffee drinkers, probably why the city never sleeps. I suggest kickstarting your day with a cup of coffee from Black Press Coffee on Columbus Avenue and heading to Central Park for a walk. The park is one of the most recognizable icons of the city, providing an escape from the concrete jungle and serving interesting views of the skyline. I like to enter the park from 72nd Street and Central Park West, but you can enter from just about anywhere. Getting yourself lost wandering the many paths is a great way to explore the park while getting some exercise. You'll see plenty of people walking their dogs or jogging or going for a bike ride around the many roads and paths. You may even stumble upon a castle or some recognizable landmarks from TV and movies like the Bethesda Fountain. Much of the park is closed to cars, opening more byways for recreation. Just south of the park is one of the most popular tourist areas, 5th Avenue and Midtown. This is quite touristy because it's the location of many of the famed department stores like Saks and Bergdorf, but also because it's where Radio City Music Hall, Rockefeller Center, and Times Square are. The area really doesn't capture the culture and experience people expect from their visit to New York City, but since there are so many of the sites that you should see at least once in your life in this area, lands this part of the city on the itinerary. If seeing the view from the top of the rock or filming a TikTok in Times Square is on your must-do list, this is the area to be. Just watch out for scams with people trying to sell you mixtapes or creepy cartoon characters wanting to take a picture with you for a tip. Make sure to stop into the main train hall at Grand Central Terminal to see the historic painted ceiling and clock above the information booth. There's also a food court on the lower level and connections to the subway, including the downtown train to our next stop. For a more authentic New York experience, I'd keep heading south to the real neighborhoods of New York City like Soho and the West Village. Start your walk at Washington Square Park with its iconic archway. This arch was seen in the movie When Harry Met Sally, and it's a short walk from the NYU campus and the photogenic muse. A night out in the West Village brings you right into an episode of Sex in the City. Stop by Perry Street to see the brownstone used as the exterior of Carrie's apartment in the show. A few blocks over on Bedford Street is the building used as the exterior in Friends for Monica's apartment building. Both of these shows ended their runs more than 15 years ago and still attract crowds of fans to snap pictures from the street today. On Christopher Street, you can grab a drink at the Stonewall Inn, the site of the beginning of the LGBT rights movement. It's so fun to just walk around with no dinner plans and find a cute restaurant for dinner like Jack's wife Frida or Extra Virgin. Also, get cupcakes from Molly's Cupcakes near West 4th Street. There's tons of bars and clubs that all stay open till 4am, so have a great time. Hop back on the train to your hotel and get ready for day two. I like to start the day on vacation with a walk, so for day two, get your day started with a walk along the High Line. The elevated park takes the space that was once freight railroad tracks leading down the west side of Manhattan through Chelsea from the Penn Station area. This has become one of the most popular attractions in the city over the last decade and makes for a very scenic and uninterrupted route from Hudson Yards to Chelsea Market, a distance of about 20 blocks. You can start at either end or enter at one of the few select entrances midway through. 
On weekends and nice weather days, there can be quite a traffic jam going either direction caused by the great views of nearby architecture and the urban landscaping. When you reach 14th Street, check out Chelsea Market. This converted warehouse offers so many choices for food throughout the day, from tacos to pizza to ramen. Many of the food stalls are quick service, but you can find some with sit-down waiter service. Finding a spot to eat your to-go order can be tough on weekends. These Takumi tacos are amazing, and I plan to go back and try more of their fusion flavors. There's a lower level of the market, which has some more stores, including a cheese shop and an Italian grocery. The other end of the High Line is a brand new development called Hudson Yards. These tall glass skyscrapers sit over top the west side yard for the Long Island Railroad trains outside Penn Station. The centerpiece of the Hudson Yards is the Vessel, a 150 foot tall observation platform. While the vessel is still closed, it's quite the sight in both the daytime and after dark. Steps away is the entrance to the shops at Hudson Yards, a four-story indoor shopping mall known for its bright Christmas light displays each year and high-end stores. In the evening, check out a show on Broadway at one of the many theaters just off Times Square. Grab dinner before the show in Hell's Kitchen and stop by Schmackery's for a cookie after the show. For some late night drinks, make a reservation for The Magic Hour, a rooftop bar on top of the Moxie Times Square Hotel with fun creative cocktails and festive vibes. Get some rest because we still have one more day to go. For your last day, Spend some time in the morning going shopping at some of the iconic department stores of New York City, like Macy's, Saks, Bloomingdale's, or Bergdorf. Even if you don't have room in your luggage to take home new clothes or souvenirs, it's still fun to experience these stores, especially on a cold or rainy day. If you need coffee or breakfast, find a cute cafe or coffee shop and grab a bacon, egg, and cheese or a New York bagel before heading downtown for our next stop. For the afternoon, check out the Hudson Riverfront and one of New York's newest attractions, Little Island Park. Suspended over the Hudson River, over the site of the former White Star Line and Cunard Pier 55, is the new Little Island Park. Open in May 2021, this new open-air escape provides a great view of the midtown and downtown skylines. If you come later in the day, Catch one of the best sunset views as the sun sets over New Jersey across the river. The park has an amphitheater and plenty of trails for some urban hiking. These unique pylons out of the river are a great unique spot for taking artistic pictures. Next, walk to the 14th Street subway station at 8th Avenue to catch the L train because we're heading to Brooklyn. Williamsburg is one of the popular, trendy neighborhoods of the city, known recently as a haven for hipsters. There are some fun breweries like Spritzenhaus and restaurants like Mac China. But many come for the view of Manhattan from Domino Park. In daylight and after dark, the Manhattan skyline is stunning. One of the underappreciated means of public transportation in New York City is the East River Ferry. Catch the ferry from the North Williamsburg Dock and travel down the East River to the Dumbo Ferry Landing. The ferry ride gives you a very unique perspective of the skyline as it passes beneath the Williamsburg, Manhattan, and Brooklyn bridges. The ticket was $4.50 one way for this 20 minute ferry ride along the river. The ferry itself is quite spacious inside along with a large outdoor top deck. Once in Dumbo, which is a neighborhood nickname that stands for Down Under Manhattan Bridge Overpass, I'd suggest taking a walk through the waterfront park to get one of the best views of Lower Manhattan. The paths lead to Squib Park Bridge which has one of the most Instagrammed views of the World Trade Center and surrounding towers. 
Take a quick walk through Brooklyn Heights to arrive at the entrance to the Brooklyn Bridge pedestrian path. I always recommend walking over the Brooklyn Bridge and specifically walking from the Brooklyn side to Manhattan. The bridge itself is an architectural masterpiece and world-renowned landmark. The walkway over the bridge is now pedestrian only since the opening of the separate bike lane last year. Walking towards Manhattan gives you the view of the skyline. You'll arrive on the other side of the bridge near City Hall and the Financial District. Take a walk by Wall Street to see Trinity Church and the New York Stock Exchange. Nearby is the new World Trade Center complex, including the Oculus, which is the entrance to the path trains and subway. The 9-11 Memorial and Museum occupy the former site of the Twin Towers and honor the victims of the attack. Every day I'm out exploring is a perfect day in my eyes. For the first time visitor or for the visitor who hasn't been to New York City in a long time, take it easy. The city is massive and can be quite confusing and overwhelming. So do yourself a favor and don't overdo it trying to see too much. This is a city full of culture to be enjoyed and discovered again and again. What else would you recommend to do for a first time visitor to New York City? Leave a comment down below. Make sure to have a great time and make sure to watch one of these videos popping up next.